reaction mechanisms and elementary processes can be used to come up with a rate law expression for a given reaction. So in this case, we need to be very specific about the reaction mechanism that we are using. And the classic first reaction that we use in this kind of discussion is a two-step reaction mechanism where the first step is slow and the second step is fast. So when you look at this reaction, it looks like it would happen in one step, that this hydroxide's coming in and kind of pushing the bromine off of the carbon here. But no, it doesn't. It actually happens in two steps. So we only know this by looking at the mechanism. So when we discover the mechanism, and this is something that uh, scientists have done and they've done experiments to come up with this reaction mechanism, that this reaction actually goes in two steps. So in the first step, the bromine actually pops off to form, and this guy, carbon with a positive charge, is called a carbocation. And in this first step, the reaction is slow. By that we mean we have a small k. And we know that because we're going from a relatively stable species. So here my carbon has got a full octet. But here with a carbocation, the carbon has a violated octet. So it's very unstable. So we're going from a less, a more stable to a less stable situation. So that's kind of slow. And then once we form this carbocation, the next step where the hydroxide comes in, reacts with the carbocation to form a carbon-oxygen bond, that happens very fast because we're going now from a very, very unstable state to a more stable state. So we have a slow step followed by a fast step. And with this, we get this new idea of what's called an intermediate. So an intermediate is a um, species that shows up inside of the mechanism but is not actually part of my reaction. So here the carbocation is made and then used up. So the carbocation is part of the mechanism but if you look at my reaction, the carbocation is not actually part of it. So in this case, the carbocation is called an intermediate. And an intermediate is something that is produced and then used up inside of the mechanism and is not seen in the overall reaction. So now for this reaction, we have two steps, a slow step by a fast step. How are we going to come up with the overall rate law for this reaction? With this, we need to look at what's going on with the two reactions, and we realize that step one is much slower than step two. And in this particular kind of setup, so slow um, elementary process followed by fast, we can say that the rate of production of our product is actually entirely determined by the rate of the first step. And this is the idea we'll talk about in a second. It's called the rate determining step. So of step one and step two, step one is actually the step that determines the rate. And by that I mean it's going to be the one that determines the rate law expression. So this only happens in this particular setup if you change the, you know, the types of uh, elementary processes. Uh, uh, finding the rate law expression can be a little bit tricky, so we'll do another example of that in just a second. But we can say, because it is a slow step followed by a fast step, that the overall rate is equal to the rate of step one. It's called the rate determining step. And so now, when I look at this, we say this is an elementary process, and I say, well, what's the rate law expression for this first elementary process? Remember, I can get that by looking at the stoichiometry of the reaction. So I know its rate is equal to K times the concentration of my reactant, and there's an implied one there, so this is first order. So when we look at this, that is going to be my rate law expression. The rate law expression for the first step is going to be the rate law expression for the overall step because step one is a rate determining step. So just to give you an idea, this is a classic example, and this is the one I got when I was in general chemistry, of how do we know or how do we comprehend that the first step is the rate determining step. If we look at kind of a sample um, two-step mechanism here, so I have some cookie dough and I'm making cookies with it and I'm baking, and I think we all know that that is a very painfully slow process. And then once the cookies are produced, the cookies are eaten. And so the first step is slow, the second step is fast. And by rate determining step, we mean in order to speed up the process of turning dough into eaten cookies, we need to uh, modify step one. Modifying step two will not do anything. So uh, if I say bring five of my friends over, the cookies are not going to be eaten any faster because what is determining how fast uh, dough is being turned into eaten cookies is this first step. How fast can I turn dough into cookies? So if I bring in more cookie eaters, the, the rate of eating is not going to be increased. So 
if I want to increase the rate or how quickly you know the dough is being turned into eaten cookies, I need to do something by first step. I need to come up with a way of uh, speeding this step up so maybe I get a second oven involved. And so now we're turning dough into cookies quicker and then the cookies can be eaten faster. And because of this, we can say what determines the rate of dough being turned into eaten cookies? Well, it's this first step. And so the rate of how fast these cookies are eaten is determined by this first step. So the rate eaten is equal to the rate baked. And if I want to speed up the reaction, I got to do something to speed up step one.